Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at how to tear down and repair a stuck gasoline fuel pump. Right here is a 12 volt gasoline fuel pump that has stopped functioning due to some stuck component. We are going to have a look at the inside and we are going to repair it if possible. Well, in order to repair it, first prize the cylinder, taking the carbon brush side up. So we are going to remove the electrical connection side. On this side, we will be receiving, on this side, we will be having the carbon brush and the commutator of the armature. This is a permanent magnet type electrical motor. So by prying the cylinder out, allowing this hardened plastic to get out, we can get access to the electric motor. As you can see, there is a outlet side of the fuel pump here hose will be connected to the outlet side and these carbon plates they are electrical connections as you can see the two carbon brakes are connected to those copper looking terminals where well, here is the armature as we have suspected the fuel pump has stuck there is no movement of the armature the armature was supposed to rotate freely now by removing the snap ring and the washer, let's take it out. Well, now it is pulled out of the fuel pump. Looking at the armature, when we visually inspect, it's in good condition. Commutator is in good shape and all the windings are very nice. There is good life depth on the commutator segment, as you can see. Now the valve body and the rotor assembly is down there on the fuel pump. And on the left and right side, you can see that there is a permanent magnet. This is a permanent magnet removed from the cylinder. The fuel pump is now getting dismantled. Now, all we have to do is we remove the valve body and the rotor assembly. The sun gear in the rotor assembly is stuck. When gasoline is kept in a fuel pump for a long period of time, it will develop sludge and that sludge will have a binding effect and that will usually be the cause for gasoline fuel pump failure especially if you are using blended fuel where there are ethanol and other additives in the gasoline those are having hygroscopic effect where they can trap moisture and gummy parts are going to develop and as long as the gasoline remains in there it will form a gum that will prevent these tiny components from rotating freely as you can see right here, the rotor and the sun gear are now stuck. There is no motion. So we are going to remove them and clean them out. So this is the assembly that will suck the fuel and discharge it through the fuel pump assembly. Now it is stuck. As you can see, I'm removing the outer gear. The ring gear is getting removed. And then the sun gear, which is going to be removed and then cleaned. By cleaning and reinstalling this, we can restore the operation of the fuel pump. So as you can see, there are some sludges and some adhesive kind of looking material that is formed on the teeth of the gear. And this one has a binding effect that prevents rotation of the fuel pump assembly. Always remember that electric fuel pumps Initially, when they are powered, they have less torque and uh, electric motors in general, they will have their maximum and very nice torque once they have reached some RPM. So if they are trapped with some resistance load from the initial, it will be difficult for them to spin freely. That is exactly what happened to this fuel pump. So now let's clean the rotor in the ring gear assembly, making sure that they are clean and neat and that will allow them to run freely again. Use some kind of solvent in order to remove the sludge and the debris that the sludge and the wasting that's trapped in between the teeth. Well, we are using very fine sandpaper to completely remove the sludge and that adhesive kind of wastage, adhesive kind of sludge that prevented the fuel pump from functioning. Once this is removed, you can put together the entire assembly and then we'll go for 
testing. So here it is. The final touch of the cleaning is taking place. Now we are going to assemble it and then we are going to test it. Put it back in the rotor and gear body. The whole assembly will be reinstalled and then by inserting the armature we will see how freely it is rotating. The armature was supposed to go into those notches. See, these notches are the ones that are connecting the inside, the inner gear to the rotor. Now, as you can see, it is running freely. When manually rotated, it is running smooth. So we have simply removed and cleaned the sledge that is preventing the entire gear assembly from spinning. So make sure that it is running free, add some solvent and uh, make sure that it is running free in every direction. And then we are going to cover it up and install the armature and the entire motor assembly into the housing. Now let's put it on the armature and see if the armature is capable of rotating this assembly. Yeah, as you can see previously when we removed it, the armature was not rotating. Now, due to the very simple cleaning that we performed, the entire assembly is now spinning. In between there are valves, there are valves for the inlet and discharge valves are there, those also need cleaning because if there are sludge and debris that will also affect performance of those valves. Once the valves are cleaned, replace the pump body, replace the gears, the outer gear and the inner gear and then once all that thing is in place, the fuel pump will be ready for reassembly and final testing. Now it's getting assembled. The fuel pump, the gear pump, the gear, the gear unit, the pumping unit is assembled. Now we are going to install it into the fuel pump body, the armature is running freely. You can somehow test it in order to see if it is performing nicely. Simply immerse it, immerse the intake side into some fuel and then spin it. As you can see, it is splashing fuel. That indicates that rotation of the pump unit is sucking fuel and discharging it. As you know, Fuel will be sucked from the lower side of the pump, then it will go through the entire pump unit and it has to be discharged from the top. So that is exactly how fuel pump is working. Now the valve body is assembled. We're going to install the permanent magnet into the housing and finally we're going to install the armature and the brush assembly. Once the brush assembly and the armature are in place, then we are going to seal it up. We are going to cover the cylinder back in place so that it will hold the armature, uh, it will hold the brush assembly and all the other components in place. So this is, you are looking at the reassembly part. Now armature will be inserted. Don't forget the washer and the snap ring that will keep the armature from moving up. We have a tiny C-clamp, snap ring kind of C-clamp that will keep the armature in place. Prevent from flying it off. Sometimes this kind of assemblies, they tend to fly off. Now we are going to install the brush assembly on the commutator segment. Always align the notch. The notch has to be aligned when installing the commutator and the electrical connection part always align 
the notch so that it can be replaced as it was now let's test it uh, okay when powered as you can see fuel is coming out through the housing now if you seal this housing it will open the outlet valve and it will get discharged from the fuel pump assembly now let's hammer it let's reinstall the cylinder previously when we disassembled it we didn't do a very nice job some kind of fracture and irregularities are observed on the housing let's see what we can do let's see how we can replace how we can re-put it together a simple tapping will do the trick press the commutator and press the brush holder and the discharge side and then tap it a little tapping a little will secure make sure that this is a fuel tight seal otherwise it will lead to pressure leakage from the discharge side of the fuel pump and whenever you do electrical connection on this type of electrical fuel pump make sure that you are following the right polarity the positive battery terminal has to be connected to the positive and the negative has to be connected to the negative otherwise if the direction of rotation is reversed you will be difficulty pumping so the direction of rotation has to be maintained now let's power it up okay as you can see the electrical fuel pump is now becoming functional when electric is powered it is pumping fuel from the intake side to the outlet side so this indicates that our attempt to repair this electrical fuel pump has succeeded well dear viewers that is all we have for you in this video if you like this video please smash the like button if you are new here do consider subscribing and turn on notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video until then stay safe